Welcome to the Ace Pilot Academy. Have you ever noticed when an airplane is taking off, behind its wingtips are what looks like a swirling trail of wind or smoke? What is that? That is wingtip vortices. When an airfoil, like a wing, is flown at a high angle of attack, there is a difference in pressure above and below the wing. This is Bernoulli's principle, discussed in a previous lesson about lift. This pressure will seek the path of least resistance and move from high to low pressure. The flow of air will move outwards from the underside of the wing, from the fuselage outward around the wingtip. When this air flows out around the wingtip, this is called spillage. The spillage causes a circular rotation called a vortex. There is a similar flow of air inward on top of the wing, but due to the fuselage blocking it, the inward airflow isn't enough to cause a vortex. The air circulates upward around the wingtip, combining with the downwash to create a fast-spinning trailing vortex. This happens when an airfoil is producing lift. Of course, along with this lifting action, drag is occurring, creating wingtip vortices. This is what we sometimes see trailing behind an aircraft during flight. With such a large angle of attack, a greater pressure difference is created between the upper and lower sides of the airfoil. This will allow for a greater lateral flow of air, causing stronger vortices. Let's look at what else will increase the strength of the vortices besides angle of attack. The weight of the aircraft has an impact on the strength of the vortices. A very heavy aircraft flying at a high angle of attack will generate stronger wingtip vortices. A shorter wingspan rather than a longer one generates a greater amount of induced drag, which creates stronger wingtip vortices. Because an aircraft's wing can't be too long, otherwise it won't have room to park at the gate. Aircraft manufacturers created a device to help reduce the amount of wingtip vortices and increase aircraft efficiency. They are called winglets. They help reduce the amount of drag associated with the production of lift. Speed is another factor. A slow aircraft compared to a fast one, flying at a high angle of attack will produce stronger wingtip vortices. Wingtip vortices will be at maximum strength during the takeoff, climb, and landing phases of flight. Due to these vortices, wake turbulence is a dangerous hazard that can occur. So, what do we do to avoid this hazard? Wingtip vortices are greatest when an aircraft is heavy, clean, meaning with flaps up and landing gear retracted, also traveling slowly. This occurs mostly when an aircraft is departing or arriving at high angles of attack necessary for takeoff and landing. Here are some ways to help avoid the possibility of encountering wake turbulence. Avoid flying through another aircraft's flight path. Rotate before the point at which the aircraft that departed before you rotated. Avoid following another aircraft on similar flight paths within an altitude of 1,000 feet. Approach the runway above the flight path of the aircraft in front of you and touch down after the point at which the other aircraft landed. These vortices aren't only produced by airplanes, you know. A hovering helicopter will produce a downwash from their main rotors, having a similar effect as the vortices from an airplane. A good rule of thumb is to keep at least three rotor disc diameters away from a hovering helicopter to avoid the effects of this downwash. When a helicopter is traveling in forward motion, it will produce a pair of strong vortices just like a large airplane does. As we previously discussed, a slower airspeed is one of the factors that produces wake turbulence. Helicopters fly at slower speeds and can generate a very strong wake turbulence that should be avoided. Another factor that you need to consider when it comes to wake turbulence is the wind. Wingtip vortices drift with the wind at whatever speed the wind is traveling. For example, if there is a 10-knot wind, vortices can drift 1,000 feet per minute in the direction of the wind. If you are uncertain about winds or an aircraft's takeoff or landing point, you should wait approximately 3 minutes to ensure a margin of safety for the wake turbulence to dissipate. Thanks for joining us at the Ace Pilot Academy. See you next time!